Good evening, everyone. Namaste. We are here with yet another session. Today, we are here with Swastika Kaur. She is BSc in Geology, MSc in Yoga Therapy from S. Vyasa University, Bangalore. And she is currently a PhD scholar in the Department of Integrative Medicine in Nimhans, Bangalore. I would like to welcome Swastika on our platform to share what is, how is her journey towards UGC net. Thank you, Swastika, to come on our platform. Thank you, Bhavit. Um, first of all, namaste, everyone. Uh, and I really thank Bhavit for giving me this platform to speak on about UGC net exam. So we'll start our session. So first question would be to you, what is UGC? So UGC is basically, it's a government body. It's a statutory body that uh, maintains the uh, higher education standards in India. Uh, so um, if you have to ask about UGC net exam, then um, so net is basically national eligibility test. Okay. And in national eligibility test, they have uh, two types of net exams. One is CSIR net and one is our UGC net. Okay. CSIR net is basically for um, science stream students and UGC net is for all, uh, all other remaining subjects. Yeah. So there is a very confusion among two kind of net also. So is there any difference between like if you differentiate in a detail, like what is CSIR and what is UGC? Net? Yeah. So like, I, as I already said, uh, CSI is for science graduates and um, UGC is for all the other subjects. So there are many subjects uh, under that comes under UGC net, uh, management sciences, then commerce, then um, all the language uh, humanities or yoga will also come under UGC net. So the basic difference between these two exams is that CSIR net, it is... Um, it just have one single paper. Uh, they have three, three sections, I guess. One is general aptitude. Then second is um, second is their subject specific. And third is uh, how they apply their subject knowledge. Basically, it's applied knowledge. But for UGC net um, humanities, uh, as in our case, yoga also. So we have um, two papers, okay? Paper one and paper two. So paper one, it focuses on um, general research, uh, aptitude, teaching, okay? So it's general. And paper two is subject specific it'll be subject specific for all the subjects yeah so there is always a question that why we should write net exam and what would be the benefit for all of us yeah so uh okay now there's a lot of benefits okay now if we say uh, the benefits of writing the net exam is that so if you want to um so okay so if you clear ugc net exam then then you will be eligible to apply for a, apply for the assistant professor um, position at any university or colleges okay and um, so if you so the cutoff for the exam is such that if you get so the cutoff for so okay fine so let me explain it this way so the exam is such that you, you if you get higher scores in the same exam okay then you are eligible for jrf and otherwise, if the uh, cutoff is a little bit lower, then you uh, you are eligible for assistant professorship. Okay, so the exam is the same, but if you get higher marks, then you are eligible for apply for JRF, that is Junior Research Fellowship, and you will be eligible to apply for uh, PhD positions at any university. Uh, so the benefit is that you can bypass the uh, entrance exam and you can directly sit for the interview. And in addition to that, if you clear clear JRF, then uh, you will be eligible to get. Um, uh, a monthly stipend of 31,000 plus HRA. So that is a good point. So the government will give you money to uh, continue your PhD, continue your research. So that would be a good approach from your side. So what would be the eligibility criteria or age criteria or your education criteria? Yeah, so... Um... TK, fine. So the age, uh, so in age, we have one factor to look into. Uh, for JRF, okay, for JRF, there is an age criteria. Uh, for general, yeah, for general, it is um, 30 years. If you are 30 years of age, if you are above 30, 30 years of age, then you cannot apply for JRF, okay? But if you are under 30 years, then you can apply for JRF. If you're above 30, then you can definitely apply for um, assistant professorship. So in the form, when you fill the net exam form, so there will be uh, two options. One is for assistant professorship only and the other one is JRF and assistant professorship. Okay, so if you are above, if you're someone who is above 30, 30 years of age, then you can definitely go for assistant professorship. And if you're uh, below 30 years of age, then you should tick for both uh, JRF and assistant professorship. 
Um, and uh, there is a relaxation also. Yeah, there's a relaxation for reserve categories. So if you belong to any reserve categories, also if you are a woman, then you have a relaxation of five years. Okay, uh, so uh, if you are a woman, then even if you are 30, 31, 32, up till 35, you can apply for GRF. So that is a good factor of, uh, for the women out there. So how to prepare for these kind of exams and particularly for the yoga students, how to prepare the UGC mid? Okay, so... Uh, Preparation actually, um, so um, okay, one more thing. If you are in your last year of uh, eligibility criteria, may, there's one other thing. So you need to, uh, you know, like when you apply for a PhD after you get net, you need to have at least 55% marks, okay, in order to get all the certificates for, you know, uh, clarifying both net and JRF, you need to have 55% in your master's. So, okay, there's one other question, like most people ask if I'm in the first year of my master's, can I still uh, give uh, appear for the net exam? So then I would say, yes, you should definitely appear for the um, net exam, even if you're in your first year, because uh, you if you see the draft of UGC, then there's a two, uh, two year window. Okay, so after you clear, clear your net, you have a two year window during which you can apply for PhD if you want to apply for PhD. So uh, you should definitely appear during your first year itself, start preparing from first year itself. Uh, and even if you don't clear in your first attempt, then at least you will get an idea, you know, like um, how the exam is, what is the exam pattern, how is it conducted, everything. Yeah. So like, where is the available material to study all these things in detail and particularly in yoga field, which is a very vast yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So see, now, uh, if we come to the exam pattern, then um, the whole exam, you know, no, it's of 300 marks, total of 300 marks, right? So, um, so like, I, as I said in um, previously, that uh, it's of two papers, paper one and paper two. So paper one, paper one will have your uh, 50 questions, uh, each question carrying two marks, and paper two will have uh, 200 marks, 100 questions, each question carrying two marks okay so in total 300 marks so in paper one we have 10 units and paper two may that is subject specific for every um, every course uh, paper two may also we have 10 units okay so from each unit they will um they will um, try to set five questions from each unit okay from each unit for example paper one each unit five questions so 10 marks from each unit Okay, in paper two, there is approximately approximately 10 uh, questions from each unit. Okay, uh, so that's how it works. And uh, what else did you ask, Bhavit? So I have asked about like what is the exam duration, total number of questions, type of sections in the exams, and how we should attempt these questions in the exams. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. So duration wise, it is three hours. In one sitting, you have to uh, finish uh, um, both the papers. So in one sitting, the, the questions will be from both the papers. So it's basically an online exam. Um, okay, so fine, let me pull up the uh, syllabus. One sec, I'll share the screen. Stop one. Sure. I'm not able. Okay, so this is the paper one syllabus. If you see, so it has ten units in total. Okay, yeah. Uh, so ten units in total. First unit is teaching aptitude. Um, second unit is research aptitude, third unit is, is comprehension, fourth unit is communication, fifth is mathematical reasoning and aptitude. As you can see, uh, sixth is logical reasoning, seventh is data interpretation, eighth is communication technology, information and communication technology, which is a very scoring, um, uh, scoring unit actually. Then you have people development and environment, higher education system. So this is the uh, syllabus of first unit. Okay, so see, like, um, so there are two kinds of people now. People who um, basically uh, they will prepare properly for paper one, and some people who will prepare properly for paper two. Okay, so you have to see like in which aspect you are more strong. 
okay like see for example teaching aptitude aptitude may there are many things which are very common sensical so if you just give a you know if you just read thoda sa then you will be able to um, uh, do good in uh, teaching aptitude then research aptitude also it's it's thoda there is understanding part is there so if you study a little bit so basically see teaching aptitude uh, research aptitude comprehension is very easy so this you don't need to study uh, then um, i think communication may also there is some part that you need to go through okay some things that you need to understand only then you'll be able to answer the questions mathematical reasoning again you need to prepare for it logical reasoning also you need to prepare you have to study so good thing is there's also one uh, indian logic um, section that is added newly okay that is good for yoga students okay then data interpretation interpretation is also very easy and it's also very scoring actually um people development environment environment here mostly it's like um, you know you have to buy hard many things actually in if you um, in my case i did not uh, prepare this part at all like while i was pre preparing for my exam uh, so both of this unit actually i skipped people development and environment and higher education i actually skipped this these two parts so that's the thing like um, see now uh, out of that um, 50 questions you should target at least 30 to 35 questions okay 30 to 35 questions if you target then that means you will at least uh, 60 to 70 marks you should get in first paper okay so out of these 10 units you you see which units are you are more comfortable in okay so um, so out of these 10 units you can at least focus on eight units properly and rest units rest two units if you want whichever units you feel comfortable okay rest two units you you can just little bit brush them and then um, the other eight units you should be you should prepare well okay so that's the strategy you should apply or whatever else you feel yeah but you should uh, actually uh, many people also think the paper one is very easy and um, i'll without even studying it will be okay but i think uh, the you know uh, mathematical reasoning logical reasoning data interpretation that requires a little bit little bit of practice uh, and it's very scoring also and of course information communi information and communication technology that i'll suggest everyone to study because it's very very scoring and many questions come from that also as i said um five questions from each unit okay five questions will come from each unit uh, so that means 10 marks you can get from each unit okay all clear uh, paper one syllabus yeah okay fine so then um okay let me check uh, paper 2 it's visible right paper 2 is visible paper 2 syllabus yes yeah so i have some markings here this is a yeah this is the syllabus that i had from when i was preparing okay so if you see in paper 1 paper 2 also paper 2 also the same thing the subject specific paper it also has 10 units uh, so first unit is fundamentals of yoga yoga text uh, one that has principal upanishads bhagavad gita yoga vasishta yoga text two that is um, yoga upanishad specific yoga upanishads okay patanjali yoga sutras and hatha yogic text so uh, in these units also but here the thing is ki here you will get 10 questions from each individual unit okay 10 questions from in each individual unit and two marks is that means in from one unit you get 20 marks okay so if you see like um, in your masters if you have prepared well in your masters mostly in your masters they will be having you know fundamentals of yoga history of yoga in first semester also also only you'll get um, history of yoga right so from the first semester itself prepare in your mind that you have to uh, write ugc net exam and you want to clear jrf net jrf jrf so you have to start preparing from then on okay from first semester itself um study in very much detail okay all these units see these units most of this uh, whatever you see in unit 1 you will be seeing this in your whoever has done masters in yoga they will be seeing this in the first semester itself okay and also you have to remember that the syllabus is also very important this is also one other thing that i want to say um get your syllabus in hard copy okay take your syllabus keep it in front of you every day see it ideally you should like by heart your syllabus only okay by heart hold this all of the syllabus and see what aspects are there what aspects are not there even you know like many of the questions even directly come from the syllabus also like for example see now here um i have seen like many questions they have asked in previous years also they have asked like for example you might be getting a question like in which kand of ramayana yoga is mentioned okay then you see in the syllabus only you can see Aran, aranya kand, kand it's mentioned right so these might be from directly also uh, from the syllabus if you see the syllabus properly from directly from the syllabus also there are many questions that have 
come okay in previous years so that's the importance of knowing the syllabus properly yeah. so see unit one mein there's fundamentals of yoga then um, sorry for the markings okay i hope it's visible um you need to me there's principal upanishads bhagavad gita and yoga vashist again um, see like uh, major of the major upanishads most people learn in their masters okay if you are if you have done masters in yoga you will be learning the principal main 10 upanishads bhagavad gita is also again taught yoga vashist mostly it will not be taught in many of the universities but um, some universities might teach teach uh, but if not then this might be a new thing then uh, see, then see okay so again one other thing that i want to tell um, see so bhagavad gita me see uh, if you see the syllabus properly then it's only few topics of the chapters okay few topics of the chapters like for example if you see here um, see um, like in um, in chapter 7 they are saying types of bhakta so type chapter 7 you don't need to study all of the part okay types of bhakta if you study properly what are the types of bhakta and then uh, in chapter 6 they are saying dhyana yoga aspects of dhyana yoga that you need to understand properly okay the aspects related to it and in chapter if you see uh, 12 you see nature of bhakti what is the nature of bhakti whatever shlokas or shlokas you find in bhagavad gita related to these topics that you need to know properly okay and also very important you need to know all the names of the um, chapters see again from here also you you will understand see if they ask you um, in which chapter they have mentioned the classification of food in bhagavad gita okay so then uh, you see the chapters here so knowing the syllabus is very very important okay okay uh, that's one point that i want to uh, bring out okay so then yoga vashishta also likewise um, it will be a new thing for many of the people then uh, yoga upanishads so yoga upanishads will be new for a, for many people because it's not normally taught so basically yoga upanishads will talk only about the um, um, yoga practices basically what are the yogic practices to reach to the higher state okay on the other hand if you see principal upanishads then principal upanishads is um, how to reach the brahma vidya okay and yoga upanishads speak about about what are the yogic techniques to reach to that state okay that state of brahma vidya okay okay so uh, okay so uh, next we have um, unit 4 unit 4 is patanjali yoga sutras again a very 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 important um, important uh, text uh, here from this chapter at least uh, sorry from this text at least you will get more than uh, so 10 unit so as i said 10 questions but from this unit as i have seen more than 15 questions also come okay so this is very important if you remember the sutras very good because directly from the sutras also questions come okay then hatha yogic text again very very important okay so if you study unit 5 properly then i would say that unit 1 unit 7 unit 10 you don't need to study those units um, like in depth okay if you study unit 5 in in depth so basically see so out of 10 units you only need to study 5 to 6 units properly in the yoga syllabus okay rest remaining if you have um, studied your unit 5 properly then majority of the thing will be done okay so yoga text me again see there are uh, yoga beej yog beej is there goraksh sahita is there vashishta sahita shiva sahita sitsa danta paddhati hatha pradipika ghen sahita hatratnavali all of these is there you need to study each of this text in depth okay so um, and most of the important text is hatha pradipika and ghen sahita which i think most of the you know who have people who have done masters in yoga they might have Uh, gone through these text um during their masters but also one thing that in university setting they will be taught a few topics okay few topics from these text the whole of the text will not be taught but i strongly suggest that in order to uh, in order for you to clarify net a uh, jrf specially you need to have a good understanding of this text especially hatha yoga pradipika ghen sahita shloka by shloka you need to know what they have okay and also one more thing while studying the hatha yogic text comparative study is very essential like in hatha pradipika how many asanas are mentioned ghen sahita how many asanas are mentioned siddha tanta patati how many asanas are mentioned so you need to um, have a proper understanding first and then you need to do a comparative study because questions are asked where you know it's comparative so that is again very important 
okay then see now six seven eight and nine um, I would say if you if you have a bio background or if you are a doctor and um, so then I think these units will be easier for you okay then for these people I would suggest you need to focus more on the earlier um, units okay if you have not studied them properly during your master's see general psychology then your mental health then anatomy and physiology um, these would be very easier for you uh, and then uh, diet and nutrition again but you need to brush them up okay if the concepts are there if you've already studied them previously just brush it up once and then um, this will be easier for you i guess again yoga and health see yoga and health again you need seven see now if you have done you need five properly then you need seven will come very easy to you Okay, because again, same thing, uh, you know, Trigunas, Panchamahabhutas, all of these concepts you will find in all the Hatha Yuga texts in detail. Okay, so that's why I say if you study unit 5 properly, then unit 5 is done. Okay, so and uh, and unit 6, 7 and 8 for people who have bio background who are, um, you know, who are, in their, who are pursuing their doctors, then for them, I think uh, these units will come easy. You just need to brush it, brush it up once. Yeah, so again, see therapeutic practice, if you have done yoga therapy masters, then um, this will also come very easy to you again. Um, and then applications of yoga, again, um, the same things, okay. Um, and teaching methodology, may, uh, there's one important thing, you know, teaching methodology is also very important because uh, questions come from this portion, okay. And there's one particular book, um, yeah, I think it's a Kevaladham publication, uh, book by ML Garote. Okay, if you take that book, from that book only, all the questions that has come till now, all the questions are from that book. Okay, uh, teaching methodology in yoga. And uh, practical session, again, if you study unit 5 properly, then unit 10 is done. So see, now the idea is, main idea is, if you see the syllabus, so ideally, you just have to prepare for 5 to 6 units properly, and rest units, it's done. Okay, now. See, you need one car in master's, you study properly. Again, you go through all of this, uh, thora, thora, achche se. and then um, your uh, principal Upanishad, Bhagavad Gita, Yoga Vashishtha, people who have not studied, they should definitely go through this, these principal Upanishads. Bhagavad Gita, again, very important. Yoga Vashishtha, Yoga Upanishads, very, very important. Then Patanjali Yoga Sutras, again, as I said, you have to remember all the sutras. Hatha Yogi text, very, very important. So, till unit 5, people who have not studied philosophy, yoga philosophy properly, um, they need to go through, through them. And people who do not have a bio background, then you need to focus on, you know, anatomy, physiology and everything. Um, and remaining, I think uh, it will be... You know, see, like few things that you need to brush up, just a uh, contemporary yoga practices that you need to know from different organizations. And practical yoga session is also again easy. Yeah. So, Bhavi, do you, need, you have any questions to ask up till here? Yeah. So, I think it is a very detailed discussion on the syllabus part of point, and that is required also to understand what we should read throughout yeah. the time. How do you think that? Syllabus, again, it's very, very important, okay? From syllabus, I would say up till now, uh, 40, 30 to 40 questions have come directly from the uh, syllabus, okay? So there was one question, like, uh, see from this, if you, if a, you know, if a candidate know the, knows the syllabus well, for example, if I will ideally suggest by heart the syllabus, okay? So for example, now if you see, okay, Chan, 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 now they have directly asked for a question where they have asked um, in which Upanishad Shandilya Vidya is mentioned. Okay, studied just the syllabus. You will know that Shand Shandilya Upanishad, okay, um, Chandogya Upanishad. Chandilya Vidya in Chand Chandogya Upanishads. Okay, so as you know, it's MCQ questions, right? So there will be four options and out of them, you have to select one. There's no negative marking. That is a good thing for UGC NIT. Um, yeah, so that's one point that I want to mention. Please, please uh, remember the syllabus. Um, see it every day, see it daily. And ideally, you should have a print copy of your syllabus so that you can um, glance at it daily. Okay, I think that will help. Um, yeah. Anything regarding the syllabus uh, specifically? Yeah, so there is a very, there was a very much confusion in that, that how much time we should give in each unit and how should we uh, focus on which unit is it fine so you have explained most of the things but how much time do you take do a person takes to prepare for this exam or do they have to sit again just for the exam for six months or one year just for the preparations so can you clear about that 
Yeah, so it, it depends, right? So uh, see, if you're a working person, if you have, if you're still studying, uh, so if you're in your master's, then it's very good. So the advantage is that uh, if you on during your master's, whichever syllabus are common with your UGC net syllabus, prepare them very well. Uh, like Patanjali Oxupras will come, right? So, but in again, in, in university setting, only few topics will be taught. But I'll urge you that, you know, like while in your master's, along with your uh, own university syllabus, try to, please um, also see what uh, UGC net syllabus has and simultaneously study it properly. Okay, so then majority of the sections will be done for paper two. Um, yeah, so for paper one, if I say, uh, for me, for paper one, I had studied from an academy. So if you see there's an academy, I think all of you know. So in, I um, I took a subscription for just for one month. Uh, but I think YouTube also, they have a lot of teachers, many, uh, many playlists are, are created where you can go and study whatever unit you want. Uh, <clears throat> also, if you have given the net exam, Okay, when the results come, when the answer key comes, I, I will say that go through the answer key and see which sections, um, which sections are weak for you. Okay, both paper one and paper two, which sections are weak for you, and then try to focus on those units. Okay, and uh, like I said, in paper one, you can as well um, just focus on eight units and remaining two units you can leave because, you know, out of, uh, as I said, out of your hundred marks you can you should at least get 60 to 70 marks in paper one okay so whichever you think you do not like to study or whichever sections you think you're weaker you can leave those sections but scoring sections actually you know you should not leave data interpretation is very scoring ict is very scoring and teaching aptitude is commonsensical but you need to you know read them once so that you just get the concepts okay so that is again very important for paper two, actually, the materials, if you see, during my time when I had prepared, there were not much materials available, um, actually, um, but few, uh, there are few YouTube channels that have tried to, you know, help students who are preparing towards it, but most of the section, most of the YouTube channels that you will find, they are in like Shud Hindi, so initially it was very difficult for me to grasp the concepts but then you know what i did uh, i got the main text like hatha yogi text those texts i used to study from those texts and then um, i simultaneously studied from those videos also but it used to take me some time to understand so but i think now if you find there will be some new uh, youtube channels also that have come up uh, english i think english youtube channels also have come up that are you know making people prepare for ugc net yoga especially and i think there are many platforms also uh, i think asbhasa maybe they had started one yoga is my way where i also used to teach uh, a few text and and there's one other academy also, uh, which is very good actually, but they, they also teach in uh, Pura Pure Hindi. So it is called um, Maharshi Dayanand Yoga Academy. Yeah. They give coaching for net and it's all free. That is very good, but it's proper Hindi. Okay, so they have a time when like uh, you have to enter in exact time. Um, and I think it's good. If you do not have any lead, then I would suggest at least um, try to sit for their few classes. And then when you... You know, when you get that momentum, okay, but you can start preparing on your own, get the text, study, uh, do previous year question papers. Again, very, very important. Previous year question papers are very, very important. Okay, I cannot um, cannot exaggerate the importance of it. It's very, very important. So so one, uh, one approach that I adopted while preparing for my net was and that when I used to do previous year question papers, then whichever topic I, you know, whichever question I did not know, that topic, whichever questions I knew, fine. The top, I mean, the concepts were clear for that topic. Whichever questions I could not um, answer, right? So that topic, that topic, so there will be one question from that topic, right? So that whole topic I used to study, okay? Because that is an important topic. So if you're not able to answer one question, say, for example, they are asking um, how many yoga angas are there uh, in Dhyana Bindu Upanishad, okay? So, so then in addition to studying how many yoga angas, in, in addition to knowing the correct answer, you also need to know what are the angas, what are the asanas mentioned in that text, uh, how they are correlated with other texts, okay? How, do a comparative study. So that should be the approach when you are attempting previous work questions, not just, okay, I knew this answer, this answer was wrong. I didn't know this answer this, for this question. This is the answer, not that. You need to do a comparative study. Pura 8 ka jo bhi hai, you just need to study it properly because that topic again is very important. 
Okay, uh, yeah. So these are the few things I think that you can apply towards your preparation. Thank you so much for giving the clarity in the answers. And last question would be that we attempt so many times these exams. Mm -hmm. So we lose our confidence that shall like are we going to finish? Are we going to achieve what we wanted to do? So how to keep our motivation at the same level and prepare every time in the same way? No, the thing is like, see, if your preparation is pop proper, okay, definitely you will be able to clear it. And also one other thing I want to mention is try to keep your preparation as objective as possible okay this is not a um, this is not a you know like um, exam where you are you want to become an expert you don't do not want to go into pura depth okay so the idea of ugc net is that it is wider it's not depth it is wider how many topics you know okay the range of the topics that you know so do not try to be an expert in one topic for example if you uh, if you are studying for example the darshanas don't try to be an expert in yaya or vashika no okay you need to you know, have an understanding, proper understanding. At the same time, you need to keep an objective approach. Okay. You don't, you do not need to like subjectively, I'll know everything. I'll understand everything. That's fine. That's fine. It has, it also has its own place, but try to be as objective as possible. Okay. What are the questions that are asked? See the previous question papers, get an idea and that will definitely help. And in terms of uh, the motivation, how to keep the motivation, that's what I was saying. If you, you know, kind of, if you join, if you join some uh, platform, okay, then, you know, like if you see your batchmates, everyone preparing, then you automatically get that group motivation, okay? So that also, I think that uh, that is a helpful uh, thing to do. And um, apart from that, if you keep your syllabus daily on beside your bedside, your table, definitely you'll be able to, you know, get that motivation to study. I think, uh, yeah, I think if possible, then try to join some group, some platform. Also, um, uh, for paper one, I think if you see uh, the uh, Unacademy Yoga, sorry, Unacademy, um, you know, uh, the platform, Unacademy platform in YouTube, then you will find uh, many teachers also have their own Telegram channels where, you know, if you join their Telegram uh, group, then you'll be able to get their whatever notes they share, whatever topics they share, you know, whatever um discussions they have quizzes they have those you will be able to um attempt and that's very very helpful actually yeah so definitely do that that will keep up your motivation throughout the practice yeah so what would be your final message to all the people who are going to watch you the final message is do not give up hope try practice uh, and also um i would suggest even if you're in your first sem please, please do appear for the exam, write the exam, see what the exam pattern is. And, uh, you know, like, um, you have to be constantly, you know, you have to keep in mind that, okay, that is your final goal, whatever you do, whatever time, little time you get, try to give every day, at least try to give two to three hours, at least two to three hours to your preparation. Yeah, even if three hours is not possible, if, even if one hour is possible, okay, you will get many quizzes also. So um, in Telegram channels, yes. So um, tele Telegram channels, if you join their tele Telegram channels, there will be many quizzes daily. They'll be um, uploading questions, okay, quizzes that you can attempt to. Even if you get five to 10 minutes that time also when you are sitting idly, then try to attempt these questions. Every time you just have need to have that goal in your mind, okay, that uh, I need to clear JRF, not just net, you need to clear Jared, okay? So keep up the motivation and all the best to everyone. So with this, I would like to thank uh, Swastika to come on our platform. And second thing that whatever she has discussed, the platform names where you can get the coachings, we will share the links in the description, the YouTube channels, the Telegram channels, whatever she has shared with them all among us. We will try to give all the descriptions below the video. So you can go through whenever you want, whatever you feel. Second thing would be that we have learned so many things with this because it's eye opener for me also that within the syllabus, you can find so many questions. So definitely thanks to her that she has put all the knowledge across in 30 minutes to complete what would be the future guidance to clear the UGC net. And thank you so much to come on our platform and give this kind of approach to all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for having me.